Okay, so let's begin constructing this guy's weapon. Right now, all we have in our character's blueprint is when we begin playing, the construction script runs once, and it just takes a skeletal mesh actor, which is the rifle that's in his hand, and it just attaches it to the socket component that's in that skeleton's mesh. Well, we're going to need to replace this, and more so, we need to replace the skeletal mesh component actor. We need to replace it with an actual, like, actor blueprint that does its own functionality so it figures out hey what do I need to hit what am I shooting what's my accuracy any of that kind of stuff so to get started let's bring in a new folder let's click on the content folder and let's bring a new folder in called weapons so within our weapons folder we're gonna make a new blueprint act blueprints class and we wanna make this an actor so for this let's call this the weapon Actor, oh, weapon master blueprint. Goodness, if I could type. And there's also going to be a few more things that we're going to need to add to this weapon, blue, this weapons folder, that is going to associate different variables to drive our character's weapon. So I know for my character, what I want to do is I want to set up two weapons: a primary and a secondary. We can have a melee and we can have a, none, a no weapon state as well. But for this, let's grab a new enumeration. And this enumeration is going to be for our different weapon states. Is it a primary? Is it a secondary weapon? Is it a melee weapon? And let's call this the E underscore. Oh, my bad. <laughs> let's go to new blueprints. Let's go down to enumeration. And let's call this E underscore. Reason for that is so that we can have this enumeration show up at the top of the list amongst all the other enumerators that exist within the editor. Weapon inventory swapped. And within this enumeration, this is basically giving us drop down options here. So let's create four new enumerations. And the first one is going to be called our none state, so we have no weapons. Let's go down to the second one, we'll call this melee. Our third will be primary. And our last one, we'll call this our secondary weapon. Right now, we're just going to worry about getting our primary weapon set up within our master blueprint, but the other ones will be there for later use. Alright, so next we need to add another component and what this will be is it's going to be what our holster socket is for where the weapon's going to go when we don't use it and our weapon slot that we need. So that's going to be coming from our enumeration that's going to drive that. So let's create a new blueprint. Go down to a structure. And this is these structures are awesome. You can just you can assign tons of different variables. So real quick, let's name this the S underscore to again make that the very first thing that shows up whenever we go to search for different uh, structs or enumerators. Let's call this character, weapon, whoops, slot. Uh, do, do, do. Let me think of the last word here. Really? It's got rid of that? Okay, so let's go S underscore character, weapon, slot. C R U C T. All right, so within our character's weapon structure, we're going to assign a new variable. This is going to be an enumerator underscore. And it's not finding under structure. If we come down to enums, let's go capital E underscore. Let's do weapon inventory slot. So this is the one that we made. And we're going to name this the weapon slot. We'll give it one new variable. Let's name this new variable our holster slot. This will probably, this will definitely be used down the road when we want to start putting it on our character's back or different you know, slots like we have a pistol, we don't want it on the character's back, we want it on like their side of their leg or something like that. And this will be a name since that's what slots are, just names. Okay, so from that, we're, let's go ahead and let's save. So let's do save all. 
save it selected so we have our different new classes now made and let's delve into getting our characters based weapons set up so we'll delve into the weapon master blueprint and one of the first things I know that I want to need I'm going to need to be able to make this blueprint work is we need an actor that's we don't need a default scene room we need something that's going to be there so we can go to add component and let's drop this down let's look for skeletal mesh the reason why I'm using a skeletal mesh is because our weapons are going to animate as we use these things and we shoot them and whatnot. So let's call this the weapon mesh. And from there, let's delve into making our event graph. So within our event graph, we don't need any of these, so we can delete these. And we need to set up a few things that need to be called. We're going to be jumping back and forth between a couple of blueprints and making functions like everywhere so just kind of bear with me as I go here. I'll call everything out as I move along. So one of the first things we need to do is we are going to need to be able to have something initialized telling our weapon we want to fire this weapon. Well what's going to drive that is going to be our third person character. So let's jump back to our third person character blueprint, go to their event graph, and where we had all our aiming functionality underneath that let's call in a new uh, button input that should be called attack if we made one. So let's see if we have an input action or we call attack. We don't have one so we'll need to make a new input. So again we can come up to edit project settings. Let's go down to input and we'll need to new, uh, do a new action mapping. So let's add a new action mapping. Let's rename this action mapping attack because that could be for any number of different things such as melee hits, shooting any weapon, or throwing something. And let's assign this to mouse button left. Again, if you want to work on a controller, you can add that too. But right now, let's just focus on adding a mouse button. We can come back and add our controller inputs later. We'll close down this project settings window. Save all so that gets saved out. Just in case, and let's come back to our third person character blueprint. Right click and do attack again. There's our action event we just made. And what happens when we push this mouse button down is we need to find out if the weapon actor we have is valid. So we'll type in is valid. And this later is going to be talking to what exactly is the weapon that we have equipped. Well, we know the weapon that we're wanting to make is an actor. So we have an actor blueprint already made for that, but we need a variable to drive this valid to see what is it checking against. This is going to be relating to everything online and seeing who spawned in the game and who has what weapons. So we'll make a new variable. And in this variable, we are going to add a new blueprint. So let's find the blueprint in our variable type and we'll call this, what was it, weapon master blueprint. And let's go to reference to that. And we'll call this the equipped weapon. So this will be the weapon that is currently being used. Let's bring that in. Let's do a get. And I'm going to copy this too so we know when we stop shooting that it's going to check again if it's valid or not. Let's plug this into both. Now one more thing we need to know is that this weapon is going to be on a multiplayer type game so we need to make sure that this is going to be rep notified reason for that being is it's got to be notifying the server that who is using this weapon so we can go to replication do a rep notify and with doing that you'll see that under our weapons that a new rep notify came up so within that rep notify let's delve into getting We'll have something drive this later, but not right now. Uh, so we'll delve into that another day. Right now we're just needing to get a state that's going to be driving this. So let's jump back over to the Weapon Master Blueprint. And let's create a custom event. Let's name this first one server underscore start fire. So we know we want to start firing the weapons. Let's make one more custom event. And this is going to be a lot like what we did for aiming. So server 
underscore stop fire. And for both of these, we're going to need to assign these on run on server, under the graph, go on run on server. We need to be reliable and we want to call in the editor. Same thing with the other one, run on server, reliable, call on editor. All right, so from there, <clears throat> we need to create a new function, I believe. So let's create a new function under the functions. Let's add a new function and we're going to call this one start fire. We'll create one more function. It's going to be the opposite of that stop fire. Let's jump back over to the event graph and let's plug those both in. So let's drag in our start fire. Let's drag in our stop fire and plug it right on in. And again, following what we did a lot with this, starting to aim, let's delve into the functions and start writing out our logic. Um, but before we start getting on the logic, let's make sure that our third person character can call this logic as well whenever the weapons go to fire. So back in our third person character event graph, we can do a start fire. Mm, I guess it didn't show up there, so let's see, start. And make sure if I compile, I did compile. Let's bring this in here, start fire. There we go. So if you're dragging this out here, what you're basically doing is you're saying, I want to look for a function that I made within that blueprint called start fire, and it will bring this up, but we want the actual function. We don't want the server start fire. So from that, let's bring that up. Let's do the same thing for stop firing. And we'll connect if this is valid, it will execute this. Um, so the crazy thing is if you were to close this down even, this blueprint, but I'm not going to, I'm going to close down the tabs for those, for, for the uh, functions. If I double click on this function within the player's uh, blueprint, it'll actually open up the function within the blueprint. So if this blueprint was closed, it would open up the blueprint and it would open the function and allow us to see what's driving this logic. So we're calling this function from for the weapon to shoot from the character's blueprint. So the character's blueprint is going to be initializing this. At the end of the day, the weapon is going to do what it needs to do on its end. So let's delve into it and let's start setting up the um, switch has authorities method so we know who is calling it, the server or the client. So from here we'll drag out, we'll go has authority. From this, we're going to bring in the remote. If it's a client, it's going to do a server start fire. So that'll make sure that it, the client knows that, hey, I want to start firing my weapons. Let me talk to the server. The server's going to go back and say, okay, he can fire the weapons. What's going to happen? Well, we need something that's going to do a flip-flop again like we had done before. Let's go into the variables and let's add in a new variable at the pool. And we're going to say it wants to fire. So from this, we'll bring it into the graph. We'll do a git. And we'll hold down B to bring in our branch to set up our flip-flopping events. The authority will call the branch. It'll check if you want to fire. Now, if this variable is false, then it won't be firing. But if it's if it agrees that yes, this is false, then let's do the logic we want to do. So we'll need to do a grab this. Let's bring it in. Let's do a set false, and let's set that to true. And let's just copy this. And let's go over to the event graph and let's go to stop fire and I'm going to paste this near the end because we're doing the same thing but I want to turn that check mark off because we're now we're not firing anymore. So again we'll go down here we'll do server stop fire. Oh my bad. Well we do need that anyways but let's disconnect it by holding alt and clicking and let's do a has authority. It has authority if it's a client it goes server stop fire. And let's bring this over a little bit. So we can bring that in and plug it into the branch. Connect the authority. Let's do the same thing with the start fire. Bring that into the branch as well. Okay, so now that we have all of our logic set up for handling the server and client for who's going to be shooting the weapon, 
we now need to start delving into getting up getting our system set up for handling where the bullets or the projectiles need to start shooting from and then where are they going to be ending well we know where we want it to end is where we're going to be looking so the primary thing that's going to drive that is going to be our camera um, however we need to be able to establish the logic of whose camera is active is it a server or is it a pawn but they're going to be sharing the same logic all right, so from there, let's jump back to our content browser. Let's save all so we make sure we save what we have made. And from our content browser, I'm going to jump back. I'm probably going to jump back into our blueprint here in our weapon. And let's make a new function that's going to handle our logic for handling the tracing of where the, the projectiles are going to go. So let's create a new function and let's call this one the camera aim. I'm going to go back over to the start fire and I'm going to bring that function over and plug that in because I know this is what's going to need to happen when we are able to fire our weapon. So let's jump back over to the tab for the camera aim and this is where we're going to set up our line tracing logic for where our projectiles go. Um, Alright, so in the next video, I'm going to start going through setting up all of our logic for firing our weapon. And we'll see where we go from what we can get in that video. So, see you in the next one.